And welcome everyone to Tech Tuesday. Today we have Photography 101, the first in a three-part series, talking about uh, ways to improve, to enhance your photography skills. Uh, I'm Walt Laskos uh, with the Cooperative Credit Union Association, and I welcome you to, uh, to our gathering this afternoon. And we look forward to, uh, to a lot of good insights and um, thoughts and uh, suggestions on how we can be better photographers and uh, just dazzle people with the, the kind of subjects and compositions that we capture. Uh, we're proud to present uh, today as our, our host and instructor for the series, uh, Taylor McCarthy. Uh, Taylor is a photographer and the owner of T. McCarthy Photography, which she started in 2017. Uh, her photography portfolio includes weddings, uh, high school seniors, dance recitals, football games, company events, and couples, and I'm sure that only scratches the surface of, uh, of the subject matter that she's had in front of uh, what we call the glass, uh, the lens of her cameras. Uh, so Taylor, uh, we'll turn it over to you and uh, off we go. It's all yours. Thank you. So hi, everybody. My name is Taylor. First, I'm just going to start with a little bit about me. Um, I am a young, I am young. <laughs> I am 22 years old. I launched T. McCarthy Photography in 2017. But before I launched T. McCarthy Photography, I um, did all-star cheerleading photography. So what I did was my mom had a Nikon um, about 10 years ago, 11 years ago. And she used to take pictures of my sister. And one day I was just like, oh, let me try. Because, you know, every parent wants those action shots of their child. So I was like, oh, let me try. So I tried and I just never gave the camera back. Um, <laughs> that was actually my first camera. And back then I thought my photos were absolutely amazing. Now I look back at them and I went to cringe. Um, <laughs> but yes, so I started with all-star cheerleading photography. And it really led me into more of a sports photography background. I then, a lot of families were like, oh, will you take family photos? Can you do this? Can you do that? And I was like, no, no, no. I was in high school. I was having fun. Finally, in 2017, I was like, sure, I'll start. And then that's when I launched my business. Um, I'll just a little bit to brag. I'm not really a big bragger at all, but a little bit to brag. In 2019, I was the runner up for the Delaware's Reader's Choice for Portrait Photography. So that's a pretty big accomplishment here in Delaware. Delaware is, a, I'm not sure if you guys are from Delaware. Delaware is a small state and there is a lot of photographers. So it was a pretty big accomplishment. Um, I was, I cried, <laughs> but enough about me. We're going to go ahead and get started into photography. I am going to show you, um, once I talk about certain topics, I'm going to show you a bunch of pictures that are all my property. They're all my photos. And I'm going to show you pictures from when I very first started my business to now to show you the difference in the different skills and compositions and lighting that we're going to talk about. Sorry, I'm trying to not talk fast. <laughs> okay, so basic composition is one of the first things we're gonna talk about. So basic composition is just the way you arrange your elements in a scene. So whenever you're taking a photo, whether it's with your phone, whether you have a camera, whether it's with a video camera, even a video camera. I don't do video videography, but if you do, this is even a way to help basic, just taking a photo with anything. Um, so we, what you always want to think is how can I draw attention to the main subject? So I can even use this example right now. Um, I have a lot of stuff behind me. So in a photo, what I would really want to do is I would want to pull myself further away from the wall so the background is blurred a little bit more. So anytime you ever take a photo, especially say you're in front of one of the banks and you're taking a group photo of everybody, you want to take, a time, take your time taking a photo, but you want to pull them away so that way the background is blurred a little bit more. And that is gonna show in, okay, so here is this photo. So this was when I really first started my business. So I hate looking back at these photos now, but they're really good to show the growth. So in this photo, there is the mom right here with her baby. Now she recreated this photo because we did it for her maternity photos. The thing is, the focus is not on the mom and the baby. You see all this greenery, you see the pavilion, the brick, the grass, the shadows. The focus is not on the mom, so that composition doesn't work. If I'm hoping I make sense. If anybody has questions, please let me know. 
So in this photo here though, it shows a little bit more of my composition because I have, this is my sister, she's my favorite model. I have my sister here, she's in a sunflower field. And what I did was I pulled her, actually she's very far in the sunflower field. So that way the background is blurred and just a few sunflowers in her are focused on. So that's just a, a very basic version of composition is having your subject more the focus matter. Now I know on iPhones, they have the portrait mode. So the portrait mode will also do something like this. This was taken with my camera, um, but portrait mode will do something like this where it'll focus specifically on the people and the background will be blurred. So if you're taking at a company event, a group photo and you're on an iPhone, a good idea is to get portrait mode because it'll focus on the people and everything else around that you don't wanna see maybe tents or anything else will be blurred. So that is a really good skill for a composition is to blur the background. In the next session, we'll talk more about how to do it on a camera, but specifically today for, an I, for a phone, I shouldn't say iPhone, sorry. For a phone, you want to really draw all your attention to the subject. So pulling them away from the wall is a really big help. So that leads into the next question you should always kind of think of when you're about to take a photo is how can I lead the viewer's eyes into and around the image? So kind of what I just said, but here you're just looking at this photo and you're like, wow, there's a lot going on. What I should have done was I should have pulled the mom away. Actually, there was another, there's another brick wall back here and had her lay on that brick wall to blur the background and pull the attention to where it's her. And then you can look at the blurred background and it's a lot prettier. Here I have the attention and the focus on the couple and the background is blurred, but it's still pretty. So if you were to take a photo in front of the bank or in front of any of your buildings, you would pull your group of people up a little bit further and then you would still see the bank in the background, but the main focus would be the group of workers, which is especially really big for marketing. Um, I haven't done any mar marketing shoots that I can show. I have, but I don't have access to show them with different companies. And that's one thing when you're um, marketing or even taking photos of your children, anything you really want the focus to be on them, not everything else in the background. So, and then that's the next question. I kind of just blending all the questions together. How can I eliminate distracting parts of the scene? So again, um, you want to use more portrait mode. You want to really just pull your subject away from the building. Now I do have photos where I have people directly up against a brick wall. And that's fine, but most of the time you want your subject further away. It looks better um, and the, sub, the focus, I'm sorry, the focus is more on the subject. So especially when um, you guys go to any marketing events or any kind of fairs or anything, um, I know I always see banks, you know, at the fairs and things, handing out free things and taking pictures. There's a lot of stuff in the background so you really try to want to get your focus just on your subject. So you want to pull them away a little bit and then take the picture. So if you're standing behind a booth, for an example, at a fair, you want to have them behind the booth. You may want to take a few steps back and then take the photo of the booth just to really try to focus in on the subject. That's one really big thing with composition is focusing on the subject. Now, I am going to give you about five tips about how to help with composition. I've kind of been giving them, it's just, it all blends together for me. Um, but here is some tips. So the number one tip is you wanna include a focal point and that's what I've been talking about. So you want your one focus. So I personally am not a nature photographer. There are many amazing nature, for, nature photographers out there. I'm just not one of them. I cannot picture a flower and somehow get it to where I like it, I do better with humans. So nature photographers can really focus in and zoom in on a raindrop on a flower. And they do that with their having a very small focal point where if you're taking a group photo, your focal point is a little bit bigger. So my focal point here is actually pretty big because I have the sunflowers in focus as well as my sister and then the back blurred and the, the sky is what it's called blown out and I did that on purpose. I wanted it not to, I wanted it to be white and I wanted the focus to be on her. 
so that's one thing. So you definitely want to include a, a focal point. So the focal point will point out your main subject. Um, the focal point gives your photo meaning and offers viewers a place to rest their eyes. So even in this photo over here, you can see it's a pretty decent focal point because they have the sand, the couple, and the sunset. So this is a pretty big focal point, but your eyes immediately go to the couple and the sunset. The sand is there for the look because it looks really good, but it's focused on the couple and the sunset. So without focal point, it's very hard for your image to hold the viewer's attention. So again, I keep going back to this photo and at the time, I loved this photo, <laughs> but I use it as my example of what not to do now, is my focal point is very, very large and there's a beautiful area, it's a beautiful place, there's a lot of greenery but especially with the mom, she's wearing blue, and the baby is wearing darker colors, they're wearing darker, they're blending in more, um, there are shadows on their face, it just, I didn't have the greatest focal point. So that's where, again, when you're at a business event, you really wanna have your focal point on your subjects. So the next tip to help with composition is shooting from a lower angle. So a lot of times, you know, especially when you're taking a photo on your phone, you stand up, you take the photo, and boom, you're done, especially group photos. Now, when you have a large group, say 15 to 20 people or more, especially of coworkers, it's really hard a lot of times to get everybody in the frame because everybody kind of stands in a straight line. So you want to take the time to pose and say have 10 people on the back and then a few people maybe kneeling or crouching down, taller in the back. But if you're taking it straight on, the photo, it's not gonna look as pretty as this photo right here. You can tell that the photographer is kneeling, well, they're actually in the sand, um, because they're in the sand and then it's focused up more, so they flip to their phone, just at an upper, sorry, this way, at an upper angle, and it shows more of the couple and the sky. So here, I took this, I think it's actually crooked. I took this sh straight on. If I would have taken it lower, it would have emphasized the mother and the child even more. So it's always, whenever you're taking a photo, it, especially one that you want to use for marketing or even one of your kids, I know younger kids are harder to stay still, but an older child or anything, and you want a very nice photo, you want to take the time to really position them away from the walls and stuff and then kind of crouch down because it all, it looks better and it is a better angle for the subject. So here, I was level, I was straight on. Not gonna, I was completely straight on. But here, you can tell a little bit um, that I was crouched down because the focus is more up and there's a lot of sky and I wanted the tree. Their, this is a very, their house is very rustic. They wanted more rustic photos. So I crouched down so that way you could see the rustic trees. So that is number two for shooting from a lower angle. So a lot of times too, I lie down. I have a photo, I don't have it on here, but I'm in the middle of the water in on a beach, crouched down, the water is up to my chest and I have my camera crouched down because I'm trying to get a specific angle up of a photo. So you just have to do what you have to do for the photo, but I always kind of want to refer to marketing because I know that's what your guys will use a lot of photos for and things and group photos is you want to take your time and angle now, if you're shooting outside of a building, you want to do the same thing. Even if there's nobody in front of your building, you want to crouch down and angle up and the building will look even bigger and the focal point will be right on the front of the building, which is exactly what you would want. So number three, so it's filling your frame. Excuse me. So your iPhone will lack the impact of a main subject if it doesn't stand out clearly enough. So I'm gonna go back to when you're on your phone. If your subject blends in, here's my example again. If your subject is blending in, if I took this on my phone, it wouldn't focus on anything and I wouldn't be filling my frame. So what you wanna do is one simple composition technique is to fill the entire frame with your subject. So this means getting closer to your subject and all of the background is eliminated. So this would not be filling the frame, okay? So this is not filling the frame of what the definition I have that I have written up is, but this is filling the frame. This is kind of confusing, sorry. This is filling the frame because this photographer wanted the beach in the background. 
So I did technically fill the frame because I have all the grass in the background that at the time I thought I wanted. But here, I filled my frame because I have the couple and then I have the background that I wanted. So when they say as a tip of composition to fill your frame, it just means that over here, I don't have a house that I don't want in it or a, another person over here. I have what I want in the picture and that is all. So that's the thing too is a lot of times when you're taking a photo, there's people in the background that you don't want. If you're able to try to get a little closer and zoom in to the subject, It'll help fill your frame and the photo will look better afterwards. So filling the frame gives your phone a more intimate and significant impact. Cutting out necessary background detail ensures the viewers get the full attention of the photo. And it, also cap it can also capture more detail and really focus in. So again, a lot of basic composition is really focal point and how you want your background blurred. It's called bokeh. Or not blurred and 95% of the time you want your background blurred it just depends on the level of blurredness you would like a lot of wedding photos are have a very low focal point because they want the background especially reception photos they want the background they want the dancer you know everybody dancing and having fun so you're gonna have a lower focal point because you want it to be very wide you want to see all of the subjects. So number four, another tip for composition is framing your subject. So it goes very similar with fill your frame. It's very hand in hand. Um, all of these steps make a great photo and all these steps go hand in hand. So framing your subject, it involves using the subject in the foreground of a scene to create a frame. So it's kind of what I just talked about is here is your frame of the subject. You wanted, when you went to go take the photo, you knew, all right, this is a beautiful sunset. I want to take the sand in the picture and I want the sunset. So you knew when you wanted to, how you wanted to place the subject. You knew that you wanted the sand in and they angled up. So you might think, well, Taylor, how do I know that I want the sand in the photo? What if I was to stand up and they were sitting down and take the photo, it wouldn't look as beautiful as this. You wanna crouch down, you wanna shoot from a lower angle and that would help this photo and really show the composition and frame the subject. The subject is in my frame. So here, I'll just do this one. The subject is in my frame because I know that I wanted her and I wanted this part of the background. If I wanted to, I could crop this photo even lower and eliminate more of the white. I could have done that to frame my subject even more. I didn't, <laughs> but I could have if I would wanted to. So the final, I guess, tip we'll say for composition is follow the rule of thirds. Okay, so I am an iPhone user and I do not know how to work Androids and I was not able to find how to change camera settings on an Android too easy, but I know it is very similar to an iPhone. So one thing when they say framing the thirds is you want this grid to pop up. Now most people do not have their grid turned on on an iPhone. I'm one of them. I don't have my grid ever turned on, um, but it's really good when you're really trying to capture a very nice photo to have your grid turned on because the rule of thirds is all about where you position your main subject. So the rule, which is kind of a guideline, suggests that an image will look more balanced and aesthetically pleasing if you position the important parts of the scene off center. And you kind of might think, why would I not want my subject centered? It's um, it helps with the showing of the sunset right here for an example. So you want, here is your obviously one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. You, instead of having your main part of your photo right in the middle, you might have it a little bit more to the right or a little bit more up. It just provides more of the background and it focuses on the subject more. Um, it's still again filling your frame because you have the subject and you have the sunset and the sand. It's just helping. So if you're taking a photo of your child on the first day of school, right, 
they're standing there, they're holding their lunchbox, their backpack is on, and you just click and take the photo. The subject, their, their faces and body, I should say full body, is probably right around here. So their faces, you won't realize until you turn the grid on your phone, are actually up here. So you are following the third, the rule of thirds. And their body would be here and their feet would be here. Even a little child, you know, you kind of zoom out a little bit. Their head is still going to be off a little bit. And that's what you want. You don't want to be directly centered. Because if I have a photo of my child standing, I mean, I don't have a child. So for an example <laughs> of my child standing and their face was right here, it would just be their chest. And then it would be all seven blocks of background. And especially excuse me, if it's a school photo and they're probably standing in front of the front door, you may not want all seven of these blocks showing your front door or your background. So you would zoom out a little bit, crouch down, get a little bit of a lower angle, and then their head could be up here or on the side or the side a little bit. Now, I do not suggest taking, turning your grid on and then taking a photo and your child's head all the way over here because then you have all this extra space. So it's kind of, well, it's not kind of, it really is just learning and a trial and error. And then you'll see the difference. So I really would love if you guys could all try, if you have iPhones or Androids, um, to take, I will teach, I'll show you how to turn your grids on and then take a photo and try it, say, or a child or a dog, anything, anything, even a pillow and take it with this more focus of the subject on this side of the grid First, right in the center versus over here. Just try it or try it because then you'll really realize and you'll when you swipe through your photos, you'll be able to really tell a difference on which of the rule of thirds is better. And then that'll also help your focal point and try to lower an angle. So really it will help with a lot. All of these, this very, very long drawn out explanation is really just to help pull your subject out, the focus be on your subject and then making sure they look right. Now, if you have, if I took this photo and I say it was zoomed out a little bit, I say zoomed out because on my camera I can zoom out. And actually now I know now on iPhones you can zoom out as well. And I had all this extra space. Say the sunset was doubled and I didn't want that. You can easily click edit and crop it. But when you crop it, you have the grid that's popped up, which is really nice. So you want to kind of, you can help by making sure they're in the thirds when you crop it. Because if I crop this even smaller, it wouldn't look as pretty because it would just be them here. So to set your grid, if you would like to set your grid on, you have an iPhone, you just go into your settings, you scroll down to camera, and it's right there, just grid, and you click it. Um, now I do know, again, I don't do video, but I do know that you can help if you do take videos on iPhones, you can actually change your quality right underneath, right here, where it says record video. You can click that and you can up the quality of your video as well on your iPhone. Again, I don't video, I have, do not have the equipment, but just a little help for your iPhone video that'll help you. Um, one other thing I just randomly thought of this is, I don't have this on a slide, is if you are for marketing and you do upload to Facebook, just to let you know if you're on a business page or even actually anybody, if you wanna upload photos of your children, on like your personal Facebook page. If you go into your settings, you can change, you go to settings and then it's photo. You can change to have a high resolution upload and that'll make your quality even better. And I'm, I'm talking about actually our last step. I kind of jumped ahead a little bit, but I was just thinking about it, that you can change your Facebook to our high resolution photos. And there's a big difference in the upload. You'll notice it. Sorry, I jumped ahead a little bit. Okay. So this next slide, yes, it looks like it's a, there's a lot on this slide. Don't be frightened. I don't be frightened at all. So over here is just the question, kind of like I had questions for the basic composition. So now we have our composition. So we have the subject pulled away. We have our focal point. We have the background blurred a little bit. We're using maybe portrait mode on our iPhone or we have the grid up so we can position them a little bit differently. All right, but now, oh goodness, so I have little Susie, her first day of school picture, I have her positioned, I'm crouching down, and sun is just right on her face, and she has glasses, and it's a terrible glare, right? 
So when we think, oh goodness, and she's squinting because she can't open her eyes. I get that with my little ones that I photo shoot all the time. They could be looking at the shade and they still squint sometimes. Um, so what you want to do is you always want to think about when you're going to go take a photo, how is this light going to affect them? Is there going to be a big shadow across their faces? There's going to be big sunlight and then shadows all over their clothes, anything like that. So you want to think about, really just think about how it will affect the subject, how you can move the subject around, how to create um, mood lighting. So moving the subject to where it's a little fancier per se, we can show the sunset a little bit more. Um, but really the big thing with lighting and the easiest thing with lighting is how you position your subject. That is the really big thing. And that's really the trick, I guess we can call it with lighting is how to position your subject. So the, it, and it says it right here, the light is determined where the shadows fall and while it's impossible to move the sun, moving the subject gives photographers power to choose where these shadows fall. So I am very big on visual, I'm a visual learner, so I'm gonna show a bunch of examples. Um, but before I do that, I wanna talk about the few different types of lighting. So there's what is front lighting, which is what it says, the light is directly in front of the person. Now, this is not always a bad thing. Um, sometimes it is a good thing where the light is directly in front of them. I personally do not shoot um, professional shoots. My professional shoots, I do not shoot them when the light's directly in front of them because when I go to edit, it doesn't always look the most flattering. And a lot of times I see a little bit of squinting. Um, but when you're outside and you're taking a photo of your kids, sometimes if you're just snapping a quick photo, the light's going to be right on them. But if you have time, you can. it's just a simple hey, can you turn a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right? And it makes all the difference. So I prefer not to shoot when there is, when, if it's front lighting, I just have the subject turn a little bit and boom, it's easy. So side lighting is when light comes from the side. So it's just the sunsets over here. I'm a big talking with my hands person, sorry. The sunsets over here and it's just shining right down on them. It's really pretty. And even when it's not sunset, it's still very pretty. A lot of times you just have to be careful with it shadowing on their faces. That's a really big thing with lighting, especially say during the middle of the day. Between 12 to 4, 12 to 3.30 is some of the worst times to take photos because the lighting is so harsh. So you really have to focus on positioning your subject the way you want them. So banks are open, I think, like not, at least here, like 9 to 4. So if you're going to do marketing photos, you may do them on everybody's lunch break because it makes the most sense. So you just really want to take time if you're taking clients or even your coworkers, anybody you're taking photos of outside, for an example, you really want to take the time to, okay, here's the front of the building and they're all facing straight, you're crouched down, but all of them are squinting. You may want to have them just angled just a little bit and you'll see a big difference and you won't really see shadows. Their eyes will be open nice and wide and you'll have a better photo. Now, if you're inside the bank kind of taking a photo, um, you have a whole different lighting. So yes, you have overhead lighting, so it would be considered front lighting and overhead lighting. Um, it's a lot different and it's a lot easier to just turn to. If the lighting you're inside doesn't look right, if you simply have the subject turn, it really makes all the difference. Honestly, lighting is hard at first. You just have to know how to move your subject around and be comfortable with asking them to move. Um, especially little, like little ones just say, oh, can you take a little step to the right, little Jimmy, or a little step to the right, or turn a little bit. It makes a big difference. So backlighting is when the light comes from the back. So I have examples of that. Um, it's one of my favorite kinds of lighting as well, because it's very beautiful with the sunset specifically, and the sun behind them. So there's not much shadows on the subject, everybody's eyes are open, they're not squinting because the sun's not in their eyes, it's behind them. So if you're on a phone and you're taking a photo of somebody and the sun is behind them, just tap your phone on when you have your camera up and it focuses and it'll fix the lighting and then you're good to take the photo. That's the one really nice thing, and, and I know Androids have this option too, is if you're taking a photo and the lighting's off a little bit, if you just tap your subject on the screen, it'll fix the lighting. And if it doesn't look right, just tap a, tap a few different places until it looks right. And your phone automatically adjusts all the lighting settings to do that. So that's very nice. So 
the last two types of lighting are soft light and hard light. So hard light is kind of what I talked about, the 12 to 4, the where the sun is, specifically outside, where the sun is out. It's very bright. Everybody's squinting. That is considered hard light because it is, this is how I say it, it's harder to take a little bit better of a photo if you don't take your time and really work on your composition and work on how you have the subject angled. Now, soft lighting is going to be more of your inside light. So it's going to be more of your fluorescent um, office lighting. And that is pretty, it's a lot easier to take a photo in. Again, you just kind of tap your iPhone and it really helps. But I'm going to show examples to kind of help explain it a little bit better maybe okay so ooh, I forgot I combined them okay so here this is backlighting now I positioned this couple specifically because I wanted the sunset piercing through them I wanted a little this is called a lens flare so this is when my camera was being a little crazy because it's like whoa I have so much sun coming in what's going on I wanted that I position them specifically to where that would happen. Now, what is really cool about this photo here is you see that the sun is in the back and it's coming through the couple, right, at their faces. I was crouched down very low in this photo. And then it also shows the sunset on her hair. You can see the sun, so the light, illuminated from the middle and as well to the side, which is very nice. You can actually see down here it illuminated a little bit too. Um, so this is front, or sorry, this is backlighting, and I positioned them specifically where I wanted the photo to look this way. Um, there's a lot of times where you don't want the photo to look this way, but I specifically wanted that one. Now, this middle one here, this is side lighting. Um, this photo is covering it up a little bit, but the sun is kind of setting right here, and it's so there's a bunch of trees, as you can tell in the background. So the sun's setting, but my subjects, you cannot tell because... Well, you can tell the sun setting. What I meant was, some, a lot of times when the sun's setting, sometimes it kind of shadows on your faces, um, but it's not shadowing on their faces. It's shadowing on his ears just a little bit, but that's also a little bit of my editing. I enhanced the orange because I wanted the sunset to really be a big difference. But I have the light behind them because, as you see, it illuminates on their heads, but it doesn't illuminate their faces or the dress and the dress blues to where I can still see all of that clearly. Now, this photo. If we want to talk about composition, I specifically wanted these bushes, um, I couldn't think of the word, <laughs> these bushes in focus. So my focal point was larger because so I wanted more in focus. Where here, my focal point is a lot smaller because I just wanted this couple right here in focus. Now, this is actually one of my favorite photos I've ever taken in my entire time, my entire like eight, nine years of taking photos, um, four years in my business. but. This is one of my favorite photos ever. The sunset is all the way over here, not in the photo, and it just illuminated on them so much. I didn't plan for this photo, actually. I had them, it was shortly after this one. I wanted the sunset still to be coming through them, but we just, I turned them a little bit to the right, and this photo came out. So it's showing the sunset on her hair and on him, and it's showing it through his shirt. So this is, again, a side lighting photo because the light is over here. So this shows the really big difference, this photo right here and this photo here, shows the big difference between backlighting and side lighting. So again, if you're harsh in the middle of the day, okay, if you're harsh in the middle of the day, you're really going to um, see a lot of squinting and a lot of, it wouldn't show the sunset. And um, if you're in the middle of the day, you would have it would almost wash him out and he would almost look a lot more pale um, and she would look pale as well. It would, it, again, it would wash you out. So that's why you just turn a little bit and it makes a huge difference. So I would love if you guys could all, when you get off here or, you know, tonight over the next week or so, really just try to take some photos outside of anybody, even just like a walk. I would say a water bottle, but even maybe a dog or anything and just see how if you turn one way or the other, there's a really big difference, especially when there's lighting involved. Now, I do want to show this photo. Okay, so I loved this photo at the time, um, but I think if you can tell, you can see there's a, quite a few things wrong with this photo. So I have 
front lighting sun. The sun is directly onto her. Um, she's actually not squinting too, too much, but I have a shadow here and a shadow all in her face. I have a shadow all up his arm, on his back. I just have shadows everywhere. Now this is a photo where she's showing off her engagement ring. He's holding her and they're super excited. So this was a little bit of my fault for this photo. I mean, it wasn't a little bit, it was my fault completely. I completely have front and sun on her right in the middle. This session's like two o'clock, three o'clock. So it's right, all the shadows are on her face. You cannot even see the ring. I didn't, my focal point was way too large. I didn't focus in enough. Cannot see the ring. I mean, you know, she's saying she's engaged, but you can't see it. So this is really terrible composition and this is really terrible lighting on my part. So I should have followed excuse me, my tips, <laughs> and I should have had a lower, smaller, sorry, smaller focal point, and I should have turned, if I would have turned her to where the gentleman's eyes were completely in the sun, but she wasn't in the sun at all, so it would be back sun, it would be completely different, and it would look absolutely beautiful. Now, his eyes would have been closed, so it would have been okay if his eyes were completely facing the sun, because it would have looked like a better photo for her. Um, so that is one thing that I really messed up on in this photo is the lighting position. Excuse me. So, oh, that's one thing I really messed up on is the lighting and because all the shadows and it just does not look flattering. Now my couple right here, this is backlighting. Their session again um, was probably 12 or one o'clock when I have to do Christmas sessions. Um, I do them for a whole month and I do them every Saturday and Sunday pretty much from 9 a.m to 5 p.m. and that's I book up very fast so I need to have a lot of availability but it's harder especially in the middle of the day because of my lighting so there's shadow the shadow on his face isn't bad because it covers his whole face but her face you can see this really nice glare and shadow right here that my eyes are directly drawn to and her hair is a little washed out um, and I mean, there's shadows on the, there's shadows on the ground. That's not that big of a deal to me personally. This has fallen over. <laughs> I, there was just a, looks a little of a messy photo. So what I should have done was I should have picked up all my props and turned them to the right. And then the sun would have been better behind them. And the trees over here would have helped with not shadowing on their faces. So I keep reiterating this because it's just really the most important thing, but really it's taking the time to move the subjects around. Again, even for marketing, even in the, the bank or in or outside of the bank, anything or at an event, just taking the time to position somebody a little bit differently makes all the difference in a world, the world. You can have an iPhone and, you know, never touched a camera in your life and you can take amazing photos if you just take your time and you move everybody a little bit, you tap your screen and you really try to not have a bunch of stuff in the background or you put your phone in portrait mode. So I did want um, the tree and the wagon and all the pillows. I did want all of this in the background. So that's why my focal point is larger because they were Christmas photos. It's what I wanted. I wanted the garland they have on them in focus. I wanted all of that in focus, and I think that's what I was more worried about versus how the lighting was falling on them. And that was my mistake completely as a photographer. I have done this many times to where I have gotten shadows on people's faces. And here, I've gotten better from working. <laughs> it takes time. Um, but again, if you take the time during every time you take a photo or you want to take a specific, very nice photo, it makes all the difference. So, because I mean, here is the all three of these photos are in 2019 and then here's 2017 so it's a big difference i learned how to kind of position a little better um, with lighting but again taking your time with lighting is just very important so one of the last kind of topics we're going to talk about is resolution so resolution is how it shows up so is it very grainy or and is it, or is it very beautiful and can you see all the detail and it looks very nice. So this is what is called megapixels. So I know every time your phone comes out, you're like, oh my goodness, that it's 16 or 18 megapixels, anything like that. So megapixels is how clear the photo is gonna be, pretty much. That's a very layman's term, easy way to say it. 
if a phone, so a 10.1 megapixel, that is going to look like a photo like this, um, a little bit more blurred than this. It's going to be very, very low resolution. So it's going to be very blurry when you zoom in. So if I was to print this in an 8x10 and blur, or bigger and blow it up, it would be very, very, you would see a lot of like grainy. It wouldn't look very beautiful. It would look very messy and very, yes, very grainy, not clear and pretty. So if I blew this photo, let's say this photo up. Um, oh, I can zoom in. <laughs> you can, oh, sorry. You can see that it's clear. Maybe. I'm not gonna touch it. You can see that her skin is more clear. It might be a little different because it's on a PowerPoint, but when I exported the photos and sent them to her, you can see her skin is a lot more clear. You can see the details in her hair. I'm gonna stop doing that, sorry. You can see the details in her hair more. You can really see the details in the blanket. And same with the over here, you can see the detail in her hair. So I have a lot higher resolution camera now. Um, and iPhones and uh, Androids, I know have a better camera than iPhones. The megapixel quality is absolutely amazing. You can take a photo that is this clear on a cell phone. You do not need a few thousand dollar camera anymore. That's how it works now. Um, so when I blow it up on my phone, so if I take a picture of my phone and I zoom in and I say I want to look for a piece of hair or something, it'll be a lot more clear because I have a say 16 or 18 megapixel phone. Versify, so lower megapixels, it's a lot blurrier when you blow it up and zoom in. Higher megapixels, it's clear. You can see the detail, and that's what is important. Um, one thing with wedding photos, I don't have any wedding photos on here, but wedding photos, you want a super high resolution, so you want very high megapixels. So again, we want high megapixels so we can see the detail because, excuse me, most wedding photos, I mean, I'm not married, but I've been to a lot of houses that people have married. They have their wedding photos in huge sizes all around their house. And if I am, you know, got married, I don't want to blow out these photos and they be very blurry. I want to be able to see the detail. I want to be able to see, say, see the detail in the dress or anything like that. So when you go to take, say, a marketing photo or anything, I'm not sure if you guys use cameras or phones, but say I, I'm there and I have an iPhone 11 Pro and my friend next to me is an iPhone 6. You want to say, oh, hold on, ma'am, can I take the photo for you? I have a better photo, I have a better camera, so my quality is going to be better. So that way when I use it to market or use it to put in newspapers or anything like that or online, it's going to look so much prettier. So that's going to go into how I talked about earlier, the Facebook to, up to change it to high resolution upload. Because if you take a photo on a, my camera is 25 mega, 24, 25 megapixels. It's um, right now the highest megapixel camera you can buy. Well, as of 2019, it's probably changed since then. <laughs> um, so I have 24 megapixels. Well, when I would go to upload to Facebook, it would drop my quality. So I would zoom in the photo and it would be so blurry. I couldn't even see the woman's teeth anymore. I found out that you can change the um, quality on your Facebook to high resolution photos and it'll upload them at a much more beautiful resolution. So then when I, as a customer, you know, um, or as a business owner, when I zoom in on my photo on Facebook, on my phone, it looks not exactly as clear as it does when I send them to the client, but it looks very, very close. So very close to that. Okay, so here is a chart I pulled up. Um, it just shows the difference kind of in iPhones, what I was just talking about. So it just shows, say, okay, the, so the iPhone X, XS Max is a 12 megapixel camera. So it shows you they actually, all the X to XS Max all have 12 megapixel cameras. Okay. I didn't realize they were all the same. So um, now, so that's the resolution. So it has a pretty decent resolution. Um, it's not going to be perfectly clear when you zoom in a lot, but it's pretty clear for a good part of it. Now, this right here says your wide angle lens. So it says F slash 1.8. So what I have stopped myself from saying, because I wanted to say it so much, is when I have the blurred background, that's what's called your F stop. So all of your cam, all of these iPhones and the newer ones, and I know Androids have the same thing, 
are very capable of taking a photo with a very blurred background. That's what this F is. So I'll talk about it a lot more next time. Um, but your F stop, if it's very, very low, that means your background is very blurred. Now, this is what you would use in portrait mode. You're not able to change this option on your phone, at least from what I know. You are not able to change this option. Um, but when you put your phone in portrait mode, that's how you change it. So then you have a zoom and things like that. Again, I don't do anything with video. So unfortunately I do not know what a lot of this means. I know this means frames per second, but I'm not sure anything about that, unfortunately. So it shows here again that you can really take a photo with a pretty decent blur background and you can take it at a very good quality to where when you upload it too to any of your marketing sources, it's a good quality as well. So how to change camera settings on your iPhone. I have a few screenshots. I took them from the Apple website. So here it's just showing you that here is the camera um, and you're on photo mode and it shows you what's happening in the frame. So this is zooming in. So zooming out, I know is a new thing on the iPhone 11 Pros. I'm not sure if it's on any other iPhones, but I know you can zoom out now to come back more, which is a really nice feature because I can do that on my few thousand dollar camera. I can zoom, I can move it and zoom back to help my subject. So say you are standing close and you're not able to step back, you're in a crowd of people and you're trying to get a photo, it's really nice because you can just turn the little option or on mine you just click 0.5 and it zooms it back. So it helps you and it'll widen your frame and it'll widen your focus. So that's a really nice option that I, is very nice to have on phones. And I do know from my understanding, again, I don't have an Android and I never have, but from what I was doing research on the past week, they have that option as well where they can zoom back to make the further, make the subject further away, but you're still standing at the same distance, which is very nice. And that's really good to use again for marketing. So one thing that I do know that I don't know you would, use too much work-wise, but for personal-wise, um, that they take, um, iPhones are really, really good at taking low light photos. So they have what's called night mode now. Um, it's actually just this button right here when you go into your phone and it's a timer. So it's kind of obnoxious sometimes, but it times it because it gives the camera more time to process everything, the light that's coming into the camera to be able to adjust it and take a photo. So that's super nice that if you do want to take a photo where it's dark, even if it's not nighttime, it's just dark and you don't necessarily want to use flash, excuse me, night mode will help you with that. So it even shows, says here that it automatically turns on um, when it is, when it feels that it's very dark and then low light. So it says here that it may take a photo quickly or it may take several seconds. Here in this example, it's showing that it's taking the photo in a few seconds. Now what I want to talk about with this photo too is it shows here that here is my subject and here's the buildings and they're not super blurred, but your focus goes directly to her. It does not go to the background. So they follow the rule of thirds with this one. Her face is a little bit in the middle. If we have the grid right here, but most of her face is, yeah, she's pretty much in the middle exactly, but the background is very pretty. And then she has her body showing. So it's a very nice and well positioned photo and she the lighting so since it's nighttime there's not really lighting but there is city lights and they're behind her so that even helps and it's helping illuminate a little bit right here from the bridge or building i'm sorry i can't tell what it is the bridge or building that's helping illuminate the light on her hair which brightens her back up a little bit so it's not light from the sun it's city lights So I do know um, that on iPhones and I do know on Androids, I know Androids is a little bit different, but I know it's very similar at the same time, is you can very easily edit any photos on an iPhone. You click photo in your photo library that you like, click top right corner, edit, and you can click this button here and you can make tons of different adjustments. Now, when you click this button, all of these pop up. And this is where um, I spend hours editing. I don't edit on my phone. I edit through um, Lightroom on Adobe and stuff. But you can actually change a lot of the similar settings that I change on my um, computer. 
So you can click in here is like um, brightness, you can change it, highlights, you can mess around with it. Highlights is great if they're shadows. So if you do take a photo where it's say there's really harsh light, so there's really hard light, and there's shadows right on the face, if you go in and edit and change the highlights, that'll help a lot of times with shadows. So highlights is a really good thing to change, especially when you're in big groups and you have a big group of subjects and not everybody is, say it's very, very sunny. You have 20 people. You have them posed very nicely. Not everybody's in a straight line. You have them posed very nicely so it's not super far back. And one person has flash on their face. You can a lot of times change the highlights and it'll really help it. So it's super easy. You can um, crop it. This photo, I would not crop at all personally because I like that it shows the ground here and it shows the background and it, your vision is on her and it looks like she's going through a tunnel. Um, she's not going through a tunnel, but I couldn't think of the word. <laughs> so she is just going through and the focus is on her. So it's a really nice photo. Apple takes, you know, great photos. So it's a very nice photo um, and it really is showing her. So just kind of have just a few more minutes. I just want to go over another time. I know I keep reiterating myself. I really feel um, like I keep drilling this into your brain. So I'm sorry if you um, it's a little much, but really you just want to have, when you're taking photos of subjects, uh, a nice focal point. And you want the subjects to really be focused on and you want to have a pretty background. And you, of course, want to have some of the background that is, you know, showing, I would not have cropped this photo, even if they were not, in, they weren't asking me specifically for rustic photos, I would not have cropped this photo down all the way to them, because then they would be this big, and it wouldn't look nice, and especially with me angling down, I wanted it to focus more up. So, pretty much, that is it, really, just, you want to take your, you want to really make sure you're taking time to really capture the photo and you want to take make sure you're taking time to pose that's a big thing we're going to talk about that a lot more in our next session but really posing especially big groups is something you really want to take time and I know you guys probably do a lot of so just take your time especially little ones I think it'd be really fun if you guys all went out and took some photos and just tried all different things turned your grid on your phone and just tried all different things and then even went in and tried to edit them um, just to mess around with them is really cool. And I know um, iPhone and I know Android 2 has filters you can put on. And once you put a filter on your um, photo to edit, you can also change it that way as well. Um, I love editing. I spend hours <laughs> editing, but I love it. So it's kind of all I have for today. I know it's a lot of information, but it's pretty just focus on how you position the person and really just work on your angle and making sure the sun's not directly on our face and things like that. Does anybody have any questions? And if anyone has questions for Taylor, uh, all you have to do is just click on the Q&A at the bottom of your screen and you could type them in or there's a, a chat room. Uh, click on the chat, type your uh, comments or your questions in there as well. Uh, in the meantime, Taylor, uh, the, the shot with your sister and the sunflowers, very, very nice, I have to say. Thank you. Uh, now, I, I like particularly the, the way the composition comes with the sun kind of like a halo effect around her hair and her head. That's, that really pops that nicely. You know, Thank you. Very, so very nice. Thank you. I'm not going to lie. Um, so a lot of times they will, when you take a photo, if I've just taken it, I mean, all of these are obviously edited. When you take a photo, it shows the halo, but when you go in to edit it, it'll really show the halo even more. Correct. So and you can fun. even, yes, and you can enhance it in post, uh, in post production like that. And the same, I, also the, the shot with uh, the couple that's kissing with the trees in the back, that shot there. Now, intentional, look at the one limb, how it curves, because that's another thing that I think is very important when, when we look at composition. You have, you, you just don't have the, the, the forest blurred in the background, but the curving that comes up right over his head with that branch, that also adds to the, you know, the quality of what I would say of, uh, of the composition. Thank you. Yeah, Thank definitely, you. definitely nice. Um, you know, I, I think there's, you, you hit upon one thing that I see particularly with, uh, with a lot of photographers, uh, like, for example, credit unions will go down to Washington, D.C., 
they mm-hmm. will go in and they'll meet with the Congress people, a congressman or a congresswoman, or those the senators. And a lot of times when the meeting's done, they say, well, let's take a group picture. So then everybody lines up and it looks like, uh, you know, the lineup in the police squad when they're standing there and you have to pick out uh, who the murderer was. Everybody's just straight across. And oftentimes I go like, why, God, why? And then the photo was so far back. So when you zoom in, your resolution is really low. Yes. And you have that. And then secondly, you also have it a lot of times where it's done that way. And then in the foreground, I don't know where the person's standing. We're on the other side of the room. And then you see the water bottles in the foreground and everything else that's there. It's like, oh, please. I think my, my contention is, and you tell me working with a lot of subject matter, you know, the folks that, that you shoot professionally, uh, that I think folks are willing to be guided. So rather than just saying, all right, let's just stand up against the wall and take a picture, Maybe there's a staircase outside and we could have people tiered standing on the staircase or maybe I as a photographer stand on the staircase and shoot downward at the mess if it's a larger group. And I think folks are willing to be, uh, you know, guided into a position that would make for a good you know, photo as opposed to just, well, let's just go wing it. Let's just shoot something quickly. Do you, do you find that to be the case? Oh, I, yes, I a hundred percent agree with that. Um, there is a lot of times where I'm doing things where I'm standing on probably things I shouldn't be on. I've gotten in trees before to get a wedding photo, like very things like that. If you take your time and any subject, even if it's for, you know, you're, you're with the senators and you're like, Hey, let's go outside. If they see that you're taking your time to capture a better photo, everybody is more into it because then you're like, okay, I'm not just standing here in a straight line. The photo's going to look a lot prettier. And and then they think too, Oh, I'm going to look better. And that's always a big thing, you know. Oh, uh, you got it. Absolutely. Because that makes them look good, makes them look better. And that's obviously what, you know, the subject, uh, the subjects always want. To, I should say the talent is what I call it. Um, I, I think another thing, too, is today, you know, compared to, uh, I'm, I go back to, you know, a Pentax K1000 black and white film where, you know, you, you had to be careful because you shoot and then you have to go get the film processed the whole bit today shoot it's digital you know you could, you could just just keep on clicking clicking and you know you when you take like you know 100 shots you're bound to get something that that's going to be good out of, out of those 100 and i'm not just saying just just to brush through it but from that standpoint i think it also comes down to when you're in a scenario like this since you have a, your camera you could actually go and move around in different positions and take a quick little shot in different positions so that you could get a better idea of how that might look. Like if I'm, like you say, if I get a little bit lower here, looking up the way the shadows and the sun, the, the way the light is falling, the background, then move over this way, take a, take one that way. You, you have a little bit more flexibility to see what might be more appealing, which then you could capitalize on just say, okay, I like it here. Now we're going to take a bunch from this angle. So yes, I was, I'm a little, um, I guess crazy in that way is, um, so in about an, in a normal hour photo session, I'll take about 700 photos. And that sounds crazy. Yes. Because I know specifically this photo, I took it straight on. I took it from the left. I took it from the right. I took it from every angle. Um, I just, I really like to do that because also sometimes and it, the angle, the subject will just look better. Maybe not the sun will look better, but I can try to edit that out. But the subject itself, it's more of a flattering angle for them. So especially if like you have big groups and say you go, and you put them on a staircase, you know, stand straight on and take a photo, stand a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left. If you're just moving around a little bit, it's better. And then the subject will be like, Oh, I like this one better. Or I like this one better. So it helps out really taking a bunch of different angles, especially for after when you look at it. Cause then you can say, Oh, I like this one better. There's no sun or things like that. So yes, I take a lot of photos during my photo sessions. Exactly. No, I'm, I'm absolutely with you. And that that's, that's exactly what to do. And, and you can get away with it now since it is digital. I mean, I, I can understand back in the day of having to get film process and what it right. comes today is like, heck, do it. The other thing is too, when you say to, you know, particularly for a group, when you have a group photos and you're taking, you need to take a lot because here's the one I like, it really looks good. And then when you go in and crop and zoom in, oh my God, they're blinking. They have their eyes closed. <laughs> you, know, you get some of that and that just ruins the shot. Now, okay, now I can't use this one. Now I have to look for another one, you know? So it, it, it by taking multiple compositions, like the multiple shots, uh, it, it enhances the possibility or probability maybe, I guess, of, of yes. getting the shot that I want. So this shot is actually my little sister. And I think this is probably the 30th because he kept blinking the entire time. And it's kind of harder to see his eyes because of his hat. 
um, that's how he has to wear it. So I understand, but I think this is like the 30th shot because he would not stop blinking. So, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And I, and I love that too, even the shot on the left too, the, you know, the composition again with the sun. And that's, you know, and I think that also comes down from the standpoint of uh, taking your time and I mean, are you, are you really approaching it as an artist. Because when you think of it, this is and has become artistic. It's not just, you know, the mug shot. You're, you're taking something that, that you want to, uh, you know, kind of evoke emotion, evoke evoke a, a warmness to it uh, you know and, and i and i have to admit uh, taylor honestly you know you said you've only been doing this for you know uh, you know working in the business for so many years but some of your shots are going like whoa you know it's a, that very very nice i mean you you, you, you you really do have talent and i and i think it's something so, I'm proud of beautiful i just, just want to throw in this <laughs> I'm not, this is not my major in school. I got my bachelor's and I'm doing my master's right now. This is not my major at all. I'm completely YouTube and I had a few mentors along the way. So I'm completely self-taught. So when people say they want to start photography, I'm like, do it. Just sit for hours, watch YouTube videos and you can do it. it takes a lot of time and practice, but I'm completely self-taught. I did not major in this at all. This is not my career. This is completely a thing I do on the side. Well, hey, think of it. Look how many uh, rock groups where you have a guitarist or a bass player, self-taught, and and they are like wicked crazy good, you know. I mean, it's it it doesn't. You don't always have to go through academic courses to be you know a perfectionist or really really good at at the, at a talent. This is artwork. This is you know there, there's a obviously I believe there's an aspect that comes to it with composition and uh, how you see things and how you arrange your subject matter. But yes, and the more you do it the better you become at it. Yeah. Taylor, I want to thank you so much for, for yeah. walking us through our session today. I appreciate it much. We're going to see you again for Tech Tuesday uh, uh, Tuesday as we um, continue for session, uh, I guess it will be, well, the second session in the photography series. But, uh, but once again, thank you. Thank and, you. Um, and I appreciate everyone joining us today for our, our webinar. And uh, we'll look forward to having you all back with us again for uh, part two in the three-part series of photography. Thanks again.